This is problem number six from 2011 BC Calc exam form A. Um, and it is an infinite series problem, Taylor, Taylor series. And there's an error bound in here. And uh, that error bound is not on an alternating series, which means we're going to use the Lagrange error bound here. So I'm going to talk through this one start to finish. All right. Part A. Write the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series for sine of x about x equals zero. So if it's about x equals zero, first of all, that means it's also a Maclaurin series, right? A Maclaurin series is a Taylor series centered at zero. They can call it either one. They can call it Taylor or Maclaurin. doesn't matter. Both are correct. Um, so let's start with sine of x equals, um, here, I'll just kind of start down here, uh, sine of x. And you want to know this one cold going into the test. You can derive it yourself if you want to on the test, but I recommend knowing e to the x, sine of x, cosine of x for sure. Um, sine of x and cosine of x are similar, but uh, they're both alternating, but they, one of them has the odd degree terms and one has the evens. So to figure that out, I always just, I actually don't have it that memorized myself. I just think, okay, sine of zero, because remember the first term in a Taylor series is just f of a and we're centered at zero, that's our a value. Sine of zero is zero, so that means that the constant term is zero, so um, the first real term then in the sine Taylor series, or McLaurin series, in this case, is just gonna be one x. And then it's gonna be minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial, um, four non-zero terms, so I have three of them, let's do one more, minus x to the seventh over seven factorial, and then it says, and the general term. So plus uh, dot, dot, dot. Oh, wait, it doesn't say and the general term, does it? I usually like to anyway. I'm just going to do it really quick. That's very common for them to ask that. So we'll do negative 1 to the, I'm going to put n for now. And we'll revisit that at the end and see if we need to kind of recalibrate our alternator there. Um, and then I have x to the, it's, a, it's an increasing odd power. Those powers are going up by 2 every time, which means you want a 2n in there. So x to the 2n. And if I just left it like that, they'd be even powers. So I'm going to do 2n plus 1. And then divided by that same number, right, x to the 7th over 7 factorial. So if I did 2n plus 1, I need to use 2n plus 1 again in parentheses factorial. That's my general term. Oh, wait, though, I do need to double check my alternator. Uh, and here's what I mean. Um, if I go to my first term, it's the first degree term. And so I'm going to look at this. That happens when n equals 0. I get x to the 1. So uh, if I use n equals 0, that's what this is. You can even write that here if you want to help yourself. Uh, when I plug 0 in for n there, it does indeed make positive 1. And this is a positive term. So my alternator is properly calibrated. We're good to go. Okay. Um, so that's uh, the, the Taylor series for sine of x about x equals zero. That's good. Um, they specifically asked for that, so they are going to give you points for this. Uh, now they want you to do the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series for sine of x squared. They're leading you toward this. They're not asking you to go through and build the Taylor series for this by finding f prime of x and f double prime of x and, f, and putting it all in. That's a lot of work. It'll work, but you don't have to do that. Instead, what you need to recognize is that um, the only difference here is that the input is squared, right? It's x squared instead of x. So you can actually substitute x squared in for all of the x's in here to get the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series, I guess, for sine of x squared. That's what we're going to do. So sine of x squared equals x squared minus x to the 6th over 3 factorial plus x to the 10th over 10 factorial minus x to the 14th over 4. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. I'm doing stuff wrong here. x to the 6th over 3 factorial. X to the, I didn't change this part. x to the 10th over 5 factorial. That didn't change. And uh, x to the 14th over 7 factorial. Right. The only thing changing is where the x is. Um, you could even... You could even just put these as like x squareds in parentheses to like the third and leave it unsimplified. That's allowed. Um, anyway, I have the first four non-zero terms. That's all that was requested. 
However, again, it's very common for them to also ask for a general term. So I'm just gonna show you how to adapt this term as well. Again, I'm just plugging x squared in for x. So it's gonna be the negative one to the n. And then when I take x squared and plug it in there, um, when you take something to a power like x to the second, and then you take it to another power like 2n plus one, you just multiply the powers. So that's gonna be times x to the 4n plus 2 over, um, again, 2n plus 1 factorial. That didn't change. Okay, so if I needed the general term, it would look like that. And uh, that 4n plus 2 power should be consistent on these if you want to double check them and make sure. Okay, that's part A done. All right, I'm going to shrink that up and put it out of the way a little bit. And... Part B, here, let's put it up here. I'll shrink it a little more so it fits in there. Good enough. Okay. Part B, write the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series for cosine of X. Again, we need to know this one as well. So for part B, uh, cosine of zero is one. So cosine of X, and again, it's centered at zero. It's a Maclaurin series. This is one you want to know cold. And if you're just trying to remember which one's which, since cosine of zero is one, it starts with one, and then it's going to be the even terms, right? Because that's one x to the zero. It is alternating, so it's going to be x to the second over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial. And then what do I need? Four of them minus x to the sixth over six factorial plus dot, 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 plus general term negative one to the n x to the two n over two n parentheses factorial is my general term. Again, just double check that alternator, make sure it's properly calibrated, right? So if you plug in zero for n, that's what gives us the one. And if I plug that in there, that is indeed gonna make it positive, which is what I want. So my alternator is properly calibrated. All right, and so uh, good to go so far. Then it says, use this series and the series for sine of x squared to find the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series for f, which is given up here, about x equals zero. So the Maclaurin series for that, which really just means I'm adding these together, right? I'm adding sine of x squared plus cosine of x. So let me write that down. f of x equals sine of x squared plus cosine of x equals again first four non-zero terms is all they ask for and uh, it should be an ascending order so i'm going to start with any constant terms and i'm looking at sine of x squared and i'm looking at cosine of x and i realize only cosine of x actually has a constant term so let's start with that one then i need uh an x term if there is one and there is not this has only even terms and this has only even terms um the sine of x squared only has they're, they're separated by powers of four even so um, I'm just going to use the x squared term from both of them. That's only one term, though, so be careful. It's going to be plus x squared minus x squared over 2. That looks like three terms, but it's really two. I'm actually going to combine those last two together because they're like terms. And then the next one would be x cubed. There isn't x to the fourth. There is one of those plus x to the fourth over four factorial. And that's three terms now. I need one more. The next thing there is is x to the sixth. So I have a minus uh, x to the sixth over six factorial and a minus x to the sixth over three factorial. I have to have both of those and I will combine them. Minus x to the sixth over six factorial minus x to the sixth over three factorial. How much work do I have to do here? By the way, plus dot, dot, dot. I could do the general term too, but they don't ask for it. So I'm not gonna bother now to keep this video shorter. Um, you could probably leave it like this. You could leave it like this and this would count. This would count. I'm going to go ahead and just take it one step further. I'm not going to simplify everything, but I'm going to at least factor out the x squared and the x to the sixth from those terms um, and put like the constant on the outside. Now, the x squared is easy enough. It's one minus one half. So I'm just going to not be dumb here and I'll just make it plus one half x squared. If you wanted to put in parentheses, one minus one half, I guess you could. Then I have plus, you know, x to the fourth over four factorial, which is 24 if you want to write that. And then you could evaluate this and simplify, but you can also just do this. You can, you can do, um, you know, minus to factor out a negative and then one over six factorial plus one over three factorial times X to the sixth. And that does it too. And that's, that's enough. That's all you need to show. 
So in part C, we want to find the sixth derivative of f evaluated at zero. And there's a couple ways you might think about this. Uh, you might be thinking, hey, I have the graph of the absolute value of the fifth derivative. If I just knew the slope there or there, if I knew which way it was going before it was absolute valued, that would work. But we actually don't know that anyway, so that's kind of moot. Uh, and maybe you're thinking, hey, I guess I could just take the derivative of that six times. And you could, but that's kind of annoying. Um, the first time you do the derivative of sine of x squared, you'll get a chain rule giving you a 2x multiple, and then you'll have product rules. And, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. So instead of that, we're going to go with our series that we just built. And that's kind of what they were leading us toward. And take the derivative of, of that. And you can imagine the whole infinite series. And what's going to happen is anything that has a degree less than six, when you take six derivatives with, with the power rule, those are all going to end up being zero, right? Because they're all going to become a constant by the time you get to the, you know, in this case, the fourth derivative. And then uh, the fifth derivative will make them all zero uh, if they weren't already. So this term will be a constant when you take six derivatives, right? This is just a number times x to the sixth. And then any subsequent terms, the next one up has an x to the eighth and an x to the tenth, right? So like those will still have x's. And when you plug in zero to those, they'll be zero. So the only one that'll matter when you plug zero into the sixth derivative is that sixth degree term. Um, so I'm just going to point that out. Part C. Um, this will, um, will yield zero for all terms except the sixth degree term on f. I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to justify it. It doesn't say justify. It just says find. I'm just giving a little bit of reasoning. And I'm doing this so that I don't have to kind of bother with even the derivatives on these guys, right? And so what I'll do now is um, I'll just, I'll, I'll show a couple of them. F prime of, uh, well, you know, instead of saying F prime of X, because then I kind of have to show the whole thing. I'll just say the derivative with respect to X of that six degree term. So it's, it's negative, don't forget that. Um, negative one over six factorial plus one over three factorial times X to the sixth is negative 6 times 1 over 6 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial times x to the fifth. And then I could do the second one and the third one. I'm just going to go straight to the uh, end here. If you want to pause, if you want to, um, you know, if you think you know what to do here and you want to think it through, I'm going to go right to the whole enchilada here. Um, it's going to be, I'm going to just show up the original thing here, the original six degree term. I'm going to be bringing down those powers and multiplying them. It's going to be negative 6 factorial times 1 over 6 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial times x to the 0, which is 1. I could leave it like that. That's good enough on these. Uh, however, I do see that if I distribute it in, I'm going to get negative 1 plus, and then that's just 6 times 5 times 4. And 6 times 5 times 4 is 120, so that's uh, negative 121. That's it. All right, so that is, uh, here, let me get this out of the way again. I should have just done that already. Um, that's part C. I think we're good there on maybe even overboard on the reasoning. Um, but it can be pretty quick if you know what to do. Tricky question, though. Okay, I'll put this over here. And now for part D, I'm finally going to need that graph that I keep, uh, you know, whoops, oh, undo. For part D, I'm finally going to need that graph that I keep moving out of the way. Here, I'll just shrink this a little more so we can see it all. And um, we're doing, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're doing the Lagrange error bound. P4 is the fourth degree Taylor polynomial. Um, we don't have to find it. They didn't ask us to find it. Uh, they just want us to show that the error is less than 1 3,000th. It's a non-alternating series. So uh, I can't use the alternating series bound. I'm going to use the um, Lagrange error bound, which means my error, I'm just going to write the same notation they did, the absolute value of P4 of 1 4th 
uh, minus f of 1 fourth. This is the exact error. This could also be called r sub 4, right? The remainder. And I would put that in absolute values also. Um, is I'm going to say less than or equal to, and I'm going to use that next term in the series, except instead of using the fifth derivative um, of f at a, I'm going to do the fifth derivative of f of x, um, and I want the max value of that uh, on the interval in question. The interval in question is going from x equals 0 to x equals 1 fourth. So on this graph, because this is how they're giving you information about that fifth derivative. On this graph, this is the absolute value of the fifth derivative. This is 1 fourth. This is 0. I just need the max magnitude of this function on that interval. And it's, it's, I don't even need the max. I need uh, an upper bound for it. So I'm going to say 40 because it's definitely less than 40, right? Um, it's probably less than 35, but it's hard to be sure from the graph. And they're not going to be that, tr that tricky. Like it's going to be obvious what bound you want to use. Um, so I'm just going to say the absolute value of the fifth derivative of x, uh, sorry, of f of x on the interval. Uh, in question is less than 40, and I'm going to say 4, 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1 fourth, and now I can use that in my error bound. It's going to be that value times x, um, oh, sorry, uh, x minus uh, a, so 1 fourth to the fifth power divided by 5 factorial. That's my error bound. Now all I have to do is show that that's less than or equal to 1 three thousandth, and to do that, I'm just going to say what this equals. Um, 4 to the 5th is 2 to the 10th. That's 1,024. Um, so I have 40 over uh, 1,024 times 5 factorial, which is 120. And 120 and 40 reduce nicely to 1 third. So one way or another, there's an easy enough way to show what you need to show without getting too crazy with the arithmetic here. So let's just do this. Um, one third times one over 1024, which, you know, if you multiply 1024 by three, it's clearly greater than 3000. And that's all we need to show because that's going to be less than one over 3000 then. And that's it. QED, if you want. Okay. That's uh, what 3072 in the denominator there.